Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my reading plans for December, hugely known as the TBR, but in this case most of the books I'm going to be trying to finish are ones that I'm already currently reading. I've decided to take a break from having Cluedo pick my TBR for December because I have so many books that I'm currently part way through and it would be really good to try and finish them. I've been debating with myself a little bit what to do about my forfeit card because at this stage, a week before the end of December, I'm not sure if I'm going to get through the remaining three and a half books that I picked for November, but actually what I think I'll do is I'll maybe carry over that forfeit card to January, or I might change my mind on that. <laughs> we will see. But I thought it might be just good to press the reset button a little bit on my TBR and try and get through some of the stuff on my currently reading shelf. At the moment, <laughs> I'm not sure how this has happened, but I've ended up with 16 books that I'm currently reading. I mean, I know a little bit, like some of them, quite a few of them are ones I'm reading for uni, for essays I'm writing, that sort of thing. But I thought it might be fun just to go through all of them and tell you how far I've got with them and in some cases try and figure out how long I've actually been reading them for and then figure out if I'm going to manage to finish them in December or not because it would be really nice to end the year with that levelled out at nothing. <laughs> so I've got a clean slate to start January. So without further ado, I'm just going to go into the books. I'm going to go through them in order from how long they've been on my currently reading shelf through to the ones that are on there most recently. And where appropriate, I'll tell you a bit about why I'm reading them. Without further ado, I'm just going to get into them. So the book that has been on my currently reading shelf for the longest is this one. This is called Portrait of the Kings by Alison Joseph. This book I started reading, I don't even remember, Remember, like re a really long time ago. It was definitely this year. I think it might have been, I don't know, March maybe? This was lent to me by a friend because it is linked to what I am hoping to do a PhD on. At the moment I'm applying to start a PhD next year and I want to be looking at the character of King David in the Bible and this is a book about him. So my friend lent it to me because I thought I might find it quite interesting and it is interesting, it's just quite heavy going. So I've been reading it for ages. I am on page 147. According to Goodreads that's about halfway through but actually there's quite a lot of pages of notes at the end. So I have less than 100 pages to go and I might actually try and finish this one this week because I don't have lectures this week but we will see how I get on with that. The book I've been reading for the next long amount of time is this one, this is Domino Journaliste by Suzanne Peyrault. So this is a French children's book. My dad bought it for me from a charity sale because he knows that I need to read more French and practice my French. I am on page 56 which according to Goodreads is about 30% of the way through. There are just over 180 pages. Still got quite a ways to go with this. My main problem is that I do most of my reading at, in the evenings or at weekends and if I've been doing a lot of studying that day don't always feel inclined to read in French but I had a goal of reading three French books this year. I finished one so far, so it would be good to at least finish a second one. <laughs> and it's alright, it's about a kid called Domino and he wants to be a journalist, so he's trying to set up like him and his friends are writing their own newspaper, it's quite cute. Anywho, so that's that one. The next one is one I probably won't finish this year because of the nature of the type of book it is, so this is the 365 day devotional commentary. So this is like a bible study guide. This one I have been actively reading again for about maybe six weeks and maybe a little bit longer. I picked it up shortly after I moved but I was reading it a couple of years ago and then I have a shelf on my Goodreads where I put books that I'm intending to finish at some point but don't want them cluttering up my currently reading shelf so it was on that for a while and now it's gone back on the main currently reading shelf. I think I worked out because I'm not reading it sequentially as well. I just sort of dip in and out of it a little bit. It has two different ways of reading through it so it has a straightforward plan that takes you readings every day from the bible sequentially from Genesis through to Revelation or you can like mix and match so you do random books in a different order which is the way I'm reading it. So I've read about maybe 360 pages. Goodreads is telling me I've read about 30% of it. The nature of the way it's 
like you read a little bit every day so it's gonna take me a little while to get through this but hopefully within a year <laughs> yeah another I don't know nine months or so I should be able to finish this one we'll see so I'm not likely to finish that one this year but it would be good to make some progress with it in the time that's left of the year the next book I am reading as an audiobook so that is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte I've kind of loosely been in a classics book club but they so far have only picked one book that I hadn't read before so I've been listening to the audiobooks of ones that I want to take part in to reread. This was actually the pick for like September though I think. So I've been listening to the audiobook, I am up to chapter 22 which I think is about two thirds of the way through I've guesstimated. I mainly only listen to that when sometimes when I'm going for walks or if I've got a little bit of housework to do or sometimes when I'm helping in the library I will listen to a couple of chapters of that which is why it's taken me so long to get through because I'm not walking as much as I used to but I might actually go for a walk when I finish filming today and listen to a little bit more so hopefully we'll get through that without too much longer. I find like audiobooks I can't be doing anything that requires too much concentration while I'm listening to them because I stop paying attention to the book so walking is about the level that I'm at for that so that may take me a little while but as I say about two thirds of the way through so hopefully it won't be too much longer. Okay so the next one I started reading this in I think this was on my TBR for September and I didn't manage to get very far with it so this is Agatha Christie's autobiography. I am on about page 48 which apparently is 9% so that's better than I thought it was. <laughs> I've been borrowing this from my dad for ages and I really love her books so I thought it would be really nice to read her autobiography. I have got a few years into her childhood and that's about it so far so really keen to carry on with this one and try and get through it before the end of the year. I'm going to be saying that about all of these books. Yeah, so that's that one. The next one shouldn't take me too long to get through. I just actually need to sit down and read it. So this is Saving Lucas Biggs by Marissa De Los Santos and David Teague. This one I got because it was the Voltathon group book for the most recent round of Voltathon, which I think was in September. And I managed to read one chapter, <laughs> which is about 10 pages, 3% of the book. There was just so much going on in September that I just couldn't commit the time to reading. I was, I moved, I was starting my course and everything was just a bit up in the air. Yeah, didn't have much time for reading this but this is middle grade. The first chapter was quite intriguing. I don't think it would take me too much effort to get through. I just need to sit down and do it. So this might be my next novel that I work on when I finish the other one that I'm currently actively reading. We will see. Yeah, I don't think this one will take me too long. I just need to prioritise it. The next book that I started reading is a collection of poetry. So this is called I See a New City by Gerard Kelly who is a director of a charity that I used to do a lot of work with. This I picked up because it is for the last square I need to tick off for the Indie Challenge which is a poetry book. I've been trying to read one or two of these poems a day. I'm not actually sure how many I have left in here so I need to maybe pick up the pace a little bit with it. They're just really like I really like poetry and I've been trying to read a bit more of it so it's been really nice to be working through that. Not got a lot to say about it really but just really lovely poetry. <laughs> the next book that I'm currently reading is called We Need to Talk About Race by Ben Lindsay. This is about kind of systemic racism in the UK but also specifically looking at what it's like for black people in British churches, particularly churches where they are majority white people. Ben Lindsay led a seminar which loads of us from uni went to, it was online and it was really interesting and Bristol Diocese actually gave away some copies of the book so I was very pleased to receive it and I started reading it pretty much straight away but <laughs> I've only managed about a chapter and a half so I'm on page 22 which is 10% of the way through so it's not bad. It is really interesting, he writes in a really accessible style and he really does know what he's talking about so I'm really keen to try and get through this one fairly soon. It's not a difficult read, it won't take me too long. Again it's just another one I just need to sit down in and read it. The next book on the list is one that has been taking a bit more of an effort to try and get through. It's one I've been reading as an ebook from the library so it's called Black and British A Forgotten History by David Olisoga. I was hoping to get a physical copy out from the library but with the libraries being shut at the moment I'm just persevering with the ebook. I think I figured out I'm about 8% of the way through the ebook. The edition that I've got doesn't correlate very well with the editions on Goodreads so I've had to 
guess slightly. The ebook edition I'm using has a thousand pages and I'm on about page 80, which I think is about 8% of the way through, that makes sense. <laughs> Just doing that maths quickly. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it, really interesting. It's a look at the history of black people in Britain and how it's a much longer and more complex history than we've really been led to believe. Really interesting, my main problem is that again I've been trying to read it in the evenings after a heavy day of reading lots of complex stuff for uni and it's not been going in very well so my library back home used the BorrowBox app which I've still got and it's okay. My library here uses the Libby app which is much easier <laughs> to read on so I'm hoping now I've switched to that app I might get through it a bit quicker but we will see. Yeah so really enjoying that and again hoping to get through it soon. I think what I need to do is just prioritise which one I'm going to work on rather than picking choosing little bits from each of these books but never mind we'll figure it out at some point. <laughs> okay so the next book that I am part way through or literally only really just started, is called Bathsheba by, you see that, Torgny Lindgren. I have read about five pages of this. I've not read very much because I've got to make notes on it because I'm going to be writing my dissertation next year on the representation of the character of Bathsheba in novels. So I've got five of these novels at the moment. This is the first one. I need to definitely finish this one by the end of the year and hopefully read at least one of the others so that I am making progress for my dissertation but I do need to take notes on them as I'm reading them about how the different characters are portrayed and what that tells us about the characters. I'm really excited to have the freedom to have picked this for my topic. I find the story fascinating, it links into what I'm hoping to do my PhD on which is the character of David who also appears in that story but I think novels are a real window into how we perceive reality so I'm really interested to see how this character, how this story is explored in novels and and how that impacts on the church and, and how we talk about that story in church. I've literally read 1% of this. I'm gonna try and read quite a bit this week while I don't have lectures and hopefully get through a bit more of it and maybe start one of the others, but that is the next one. The next one is one I got out from the college library for fun. My housemates really laughed at me when I said this. There's a Christian theologian author that I really like called Henri Nouwen and I found in our college library a biography of him. Well, it's called A Portrait. It's called Wounded Prophet and it's written by Michael Ford and it's an exploration of his life and how that impacted on his writings. It's a really interesting, fascinating insight into his life, into how his mind worked, that sort of thing. And I'm finding it really interesting, really nice to read. So I read about 40 pages, which is about 15% of the way through. And it's making me just really want to read his books more. I have a couple of them here. I think our library actually has loads of them as well so keen once I've read this to work through some more of his works but this is kind of my morning book when I get up and have a bit of time in the morning to read before starting lectures I try and read some of this but with various other commitments and my sleep patterns being a bit rubbish recently I've not had a lot of time in the mornings to read so hoping to get back into that routine a little bit more over the next couple of weeks and try and read some more of this. Okay so then I have two books that I picked up for essays that I've been writing actually handed in one of the essays that I was reading these books for yesterday on the day of filming. Okay, sorry if the light went a bit weird there, I don't know why that happened. <laughs> yeah, so I've just handed in an essay which I was using these books for, but I do have another linked essay to write, so I am going to carry on reading them. There's one more to come as well in a minute. These were both for my missions class, which is one of my favourite classes. I mean, I really love all my classes. This first one, I've kind of been reading random bits of it. It's called Constance in Context, A Theology of Mission for Today. And it's written by Stephen Bevins and Roger Schro Schroeder. Schroeder? I think it's Schroeder. I can't remember. Anywho, so our lecturer really loves this book <laughs> and he talks about it a lot. So we've had to read little bits of it for some lectures and I've read little bits of it for, for the essay I've just written. But I'm trying to read through it more systematically as well now. So in that sense, I've only read like about half of the introduction, but I've actually read maybe about 50 pages having read some of the chapters other chapters, maybe a little bit more than that. So I've read about 10% of it. I'm going to be reading it through it more systematically, but I probably won't reread the chapters already read or maybe I'll quickly skim read them. Anywho, I'm not going to talk loads about it, it's about how the world has changed and so how Christians think about talking about what we believe needs to change based on that. And then another one, this is another one that I've read some of it a few years ago and then when I was studying before and then haven't really picked it up but it was relevant to the essay I've just been writing so I picked it up again. So this is A Theology of Liberation by 
Gustavo Gutierrez, who is a Latin American theologian it's about liberation theology, which is a theology that looks at, I literally just wrote an essay on this, I should be able to talk about it. Liberation theology looks at the understanding of the Bible from people living in poverty and how their experiences affect the way they understand what the Bible says. So it uses that as a starting point. It's about liberation, it's about how the Bible has a message of freedom for people. So it's really interesting, I quite enjoyed writing the essay on it and because I've got to do another linked essay I'm going to try and finish this book which I've been meaning to read finish for ages. <laughs> I've read about 80 pages of it so I'm about a quarter of the way through it so that's that one. There is one more that I've been reading for that essay which even though it's someone I started most recently I'm just going to talk about it now so I get the three of them out of the way so this is again about liberation theology. This is Liberation Theology UK by Chris Rowland and John Vincent and takes the themes of Gutierrez's book and the other theologians that write about that and applies them to a UK setting. This was written in 95 so it's slightly dated but still really interesting and quite relevant to the essays I've had to write. So I've read about 24 pages of that and it's quite short, it's only just over 100 pages so I'm about a quarter of the way through already, hopefully we'll finish that one this week. Okay and we're nearly there, we are nearly there. <laughs> the penultimate book I'm going to talk about today is called Delusions of Gender by Cordelia Fine. I am buddy reading this with my friend Penny. We've both had a pretty stressful couple of weeks so neither of us have got very far with it. I am on page six so I've read 1% of this book. <laughs> Helpfully as well though this one, the last like 100 pages or so are notes so it's slightly shorter than it looks. It's really interesting, it's about the science behind gender and sex and how that is misunderstood a lot of the time so we're really enjoying it, it's just yeah another one that it's hard work to read when I've had a busy day studying so hopefully when I have a bit of time off over Christmas I'll be able to make some progress with that. And then the final book that I'm currently reading is one of my Cluedo picks for November and I'm about two thirds of the way through which is I'm finally reading The Loving Cup which is the 10th book in the Poldark series. I've been meaning to get around to reading this for ages, I don't even remember when I read the previous book and I'm really enjoying it, it's really nice to be back in 19th century Cornwall and to be with these characters again and see how the story develops. If you're unfamiliar with the Poldark books you may have seen the TV series, there are 12 books in the series and the first seven? I think it's seven. The first seven or eight books look at one generation of this family, Ross and Demelza, and when they are sort of adults <laughs> and like their relationships are ups and downs with other families in the neighbourhood, it's set in Cornwall. And then I think it's from book eight or nine, I think it's from book eight onwards, it looks at the next generation, it's set about 20 years later when their children are grown up and explores their family relationships like their marriages, their loves and that sort of thing. So it's been really good to get back into this series and I'm hopefully going to finish this one maybe today because I don't have a lot planned today but definitely this week. Those are the 16 books I'm currently reading most of which I'm hoping to finish by the end of the year. On top of that I also have the November Space Sirens book club book which I haven't started yet which is Black Sun by B Rebecca Roanhorse. I'm hoping to read this this week because it's not very long until our live show now. So I'm going to be reading this and I'm going to be filming a book diary for this one as well. We've also just decided on our December book which is called, I think it's called Seven Devils by Laura Lamb and Elizabeth May. So I've ordered my copy of that, it will be coming soon. I'm going to be trying to read that in December as well. I've also got the three books that I haven't quite finished yet for my November TBR that I'm going to try and get to two. We will see if I manage to fit any of those in or not and I'll make a decision at some point about whether I'm going to carry over the forfeit card if I don't manage to finish those three books. And then one book that I really do want to try and read this year, I mentioned in my end of the year book tag, is Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. I really want to finish this series. So if that wasn't enough, I also, because I just really love books, <laughs> I've treated myself to a book advent calendar from Ninja Book Box. So there are four books in here. I'm not sure whether I'm going to try and read them as well. If there's any that are like Christmassy, I might try and read them. But what I'm going to do over the month of December, I'm going to open one book a week 
and I'm gonna do maybe probably like a mini video when I open them so just very short to tell you what book I've got in my advent calendar so I'm very excited there's lots of other gifty things as well I'll probably do like some sort of unboxing when I start that as well there will also be <laughs> oh yes I'm filming a little bit later today the announcement for the Christmas readathon and around the time that that starts I'll also be putting together a TBR for that. Maybe made up of some of these books although I usually try and read entire books for that readathon but the whole point of it is that it's a really low-key readathon to just enjoy reading over the Christmas period so keep your eyes out for that announcement and for a TBR for that a little bit later on in December. But that is it! Yeah I've got a big old stack of books to try and get through <laughs> in December. Let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought of them, do you want to place a bet on whether I'm actually going to get through this pile or not? I think I can, to be fair, because we break up, our last day of uni is the 11th of December. I've got an essay due in on the 18th and one due in on the 4th of January. But other than that, like, they will take some work, obviously, and I've got a Hebrew exam to prepare for, but I don't see myself as having too much stress over the holiday period. It's going to be very low-key Christmas obviously with the global pandemic and restrictions on what we're allowed to do, who we're allowed to see, so I imagine I'm going to have a lot of time for reading and it'll be really good to get through some of these. Anywho, let me know what your reading plans for Christmas are, let me know if you want to take part in the Christmas readathon, it'd be really great to have you join in that. Please also like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already and also follow me on my social media where you can see how I'm getting on with these books. I need to get a bit more up to date with Instagram but I will let you know how I'm progressing on Goodreads and on Twitter and on Instagram. All that information is listed for you in the description box below. But that is it for today, so thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Bye!